Hey everyone, Dr. Hey J, Dr. Shane here, back for our weekly question and answer period, specifically answered. And this week we're going to answer a question from one of our uh, frequent followers, Kathy. All, all of, this is all about blood sugar, ways to prevent type 2 diabetes and ways to manage your blood sugar. And we've got some information for you. Some of it's going to be a little bit debatable. Some of them, the, the you know, the researchers it isn't the, the research isn't totally clear which way it's going to go. But there are a few things we can talk about that are pretty much universally accepted as ways to help prevent type 2 diabetes and manage blood sugar. The first one we're going to talk about today is going to be high intensity interval training. So, uh, way more effective for you than going for a walk or a nice slow jog or maybe even a yoga class. All those things are great things to do. Don't get me wrong. But in terms of managing blood sugar and preventing diabetes type 2. High intensity interval training, like going for sprints or going for a, a, a you know solid weight training session where you get physically sore the next day, that has shown to be way more effective in driving blood sugar from the blood into the muscles where your muscles can heat it up and use it and uh, help uh, get a more effective, more responsive insulin response. Mm -hmm. uh, the next uh, universally agreed upon way to help prevent this kind of stuff would be eating a high fiber or a whole foods based diet. Dr. Shane can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, that's something that, you know, as much as we attempt to try to get away from that, you just can't. There isn't a supplement out there. There's not a, a nutraceutical that you can take. There's not a shortcut. Guys, Grandma was right. Eat your veggies. you got to eat your vegetables. Um, there's, not, there's not an option. Eat whole food. We always kind of say in the office, real food doesn't have labels. You know, you go to the farmer's market and pick up a zucchini. There's no, like, nutrition facts on the side of it. That's food. Food that has food that it comes in a box or a can or it's been pre-prepped, it's not going to have the same quality um, or the same level of nutrients as it did coming fresh off plant. And here, for, for those of us who live in Rico, we're super fortunate. We're surrounded by farms and farmers, and so we have access to some of the most incredible fresh, locally grown foods uh, that there are. So eat vegetables, add them to every meal that you can. Um, I forget the author's name. Uh, yeah, so Poland? Michael oh. Pollan, yeah, Michael yeah. Pollan, he's you know quite famous in the world of nutrition and, and you know different ways of eating and of studies on food. And one of his, this book here is In Defense of Food. He's the same guy who wrote Omnivore's Dilemma, super famous. And his first sentence in this book I think is just on point because really you, can, you can dissect this topic until the cows come home, no pun intended, but this research that supports several different things, but his general consensus is eat real food, what Dr. Shane just said, not too much, so don't overindulge, and mostly plants. So like most of our, our most, most of our health related answers in this office based on our philosophy is there's no quick fix. It's a multifactorial, general good lifestyle kind of approach, right? And so some foods may be more prone to, you know, spiking blood sugars and some may be more prone to helping them, but in general, a plant-based whole food diet has been shown to be super effective mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, preventing diabetes type 2 and helping manage, manage blood sugars. Uh, the other thing that we want to talk about today too is gaps between meals and Dr. Shane has something to add about that. Yeah, just you know there's there's a concept out there running around intermittent fasting and I'm not you can google that but the, the, the concept is I mean, every time you eat your body has to prepare. It doesn't know that you're eating a stick of butter, a steak or you know a salad but it has to be ready for anything especially sugar. Every time you eat, your, your pancreas is going to have to screen insulin because it's, it's got to get ready. Because sugar uh, prolonged in the bloodstream, if it doesn't get out fast enough, that's where we start to have all kinds of, of issues. And so your pancreas doesn't know what's coming. Uh, so it's preparing. So more times you eat throughout the day, you eat five, six, seven little snacks throughout the day, well, every time you eat, whoosh, so insulin, 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 insulin. Um, and that time is where we want to to develop insulin resistance. Um, it also it's a stress on your pancreas. Also, when insulin is present in the blood, you cannot burn fat. So it makes sense then that the less time that insulin is floating in the bloodstream, the more time you can spend burning body fat in between meals. So stick to the three squares a day. Again, a lot of this you know old wisdom from grandma and grandpa back in the day is, is they were right. Still true. Eat fresh veggies. Um, try to eat three square meals a day, mostly whole foods. It's not like you can't have some meat now and then, but you guys know me, I, I, I buy my meat fresh, local, grass-fed only. Quality um, makes a difference. Quality, quality counts for something here in terms of your, your, your meat sources or your food source in general, even vegetables. Quality, quality makes a difference, right? So 100%. make sure you try to spend your money wisely on your health, and that's going to be spending money on, on quality food. You know, there's a saying out there, either pay the farm or eventually you pay the pharmacist. You're going to pay somebody, right? So you guys will pay the farm for good quality food along the way. Yep, you're going to feel better. Uh, you're going to be less likely to 
develop into this. Um, and if you have it, it's, it, it is a reversible thing. That's kind of a known fact, too. You, you implement a high veggie, you know, full fiber diet, um, good, clean, quality meats, uh, again, within reason, um, good quality fats, avocados and nuts, um, coconut oil, th those kinds of things. Exactly. Um, they're going to be uh, they're going to be a game changer for you. And then th finally, give it time. You, you know, we're, we're always looking for quick fixes and a smoothie diet and a cabbage diet and a, a snake juice diet and all this kind of stuff. Just eat this for a long period of time, and then your body will, will act accordingly. Always trust your body's ability to do the right thing. It knows what it's doing. We're the ones that overthink this stuff. All right, guys. So that's our sort of long, short answer for how to prevent type two diabetes and manage blood sugar. Like I said, it's a monster topic. So you know, take some time if you're seriously concerned about this to either reach out to us, and we'll discuss it further with you on the phone or what have you, or do some research online and find some things that um, you know help you make some good quality choices about your lifestyle and your diet. If you guys come across some cool stuff, if there's a, some neat research out there or whatever, post the links to the site. I mean, we want. Uh, right. curators of information and stuff so exactly. we're kind of dependent on y'all to be googling this and stuff. And sometimes we don't know the answer and you guys can help us figure it out or sometimes yeah. we'll just you know we'll just uh, you know bring both sides of the debate to the table and let you guys sort that out for yourself. Yep. So that's yep. going to wrap it up for this week. We have our ticket contest coming up in a couple more days. We're going to be uh, ending the contest and drawing the winner of a little vacation giveaway so make sure you pay attention for that. That'd be awesome. And we'll see you guys back here a week from, tomorrow, uh, week from today. Happy 4th y'all. Happy 4th. See ya.